the film ends. Just, mm, okay, you've watched the film, and but and then it, the story carries on uh, in the film. <laughs> My Danish hitchhiking partner, Dansk, and I have reached Benares on the banks of the Ganges River. And I had my epiphany there, became an earth person. And then what happened? Well, okay. Um, we wander uh, out of Benares. Uh, and Benares is like a 2,000 year old Bhagavad Gita atmosphere, temples, cows in the road, the burning ghats. Uh, so here we are hitchhiking along the Grand Trunk Road, which is the main road from Peshawar to Calcutta, called the GT Road for short, Grand Trunk Road. We're hitchhiking along there, and what? Uh, no cars, uh, or you know, no trucks stopping. There aren't many cars in India in 1967, anyway. And if they are, they're usually packed full with about 17 people. So rarely do we get a ride from a car. It's usually truck drivers, which you saw in the film. Us hitchhiking with the truck drivers. Didn't you? Uh, okay. Um, well, Dansk, <coughs> his name, uh, he likes to fantasize about, oh, Timothy Leary, California, LSD. Uh, because unlike me, I've never tripped on LSD. He has, and uh, I guess it's the wondering, like, uh, maybe we just smoke a pipe of hashish. <laughs> and... Maybe we should be going to California. I mean, why get hung up on k k k k cat man do? Huh? Um, so we decide to play a a a real wild <laughs> global game. He hitchhikes on one side of the road toward California, Europe, and California. I hitchhike on the other side of the road. <laughs> Hitchhiking for Kathmandu, and we agree whoever gets the first lift will go that way around planet Earth. It's so great to be 20 years old. <laughs> and what happens? Oh, this British Bedford truck all painted up with animals and tigers and, and sugar cane and jungle stops for me. So... <laughs> we climb in the back and off we go. Continuing on to Kathmandu. All right. Um, eventually, be, we become wary of the throngs of Indians who, you know, aggressively chat us up. They, they have a reason to, because in this time, there are no televisions in India. And we're kind of like world news connection on legs. They want to know what's going on. and uh, But for us, it's like, oh, no, it's just like never ending, you know, getting down from a truck in a big city like Lucknow and, you know, hundreds of people in the streets. Uh, so we, we, we actually refuse to talk to Indians unless they buy us a cold drink. Ice cold, oh, wow, well, you know. So any kind, you know, can be. They they might not have ice around here, anyway. Mm. Well, uh, you know, thanks. Thanks, got money. I'm totally broke. Uh, by the way, as you know in the film, he's carrying ten pounds of pure <laughs> cashmere hashish with him. Ten pounds. More than four kilograms. <laughs> Got the right partner, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we get overheard on a train. Uh, we got on a sleeper train. Uh, 
describing the Indians as aggressive and irritating as mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we were overheard making this smart remark and we fall asleep. The Indians take their revenge against us that night while we're deep asleep and rip off our passports and all of Dank's money. Well, we wake up, discover the theft. We do not hesitate to keep going. It would be a nightmare to backtrack. It would take us like at least a week to hitchhike back to New Delhi and then beg our embassies without money for a new passport. Uh, so we keep on going and get off the train at Roxal on the Indian-Nepali border on the Indian side. We disembark from the train. And I note that at this point, I have been gone from Syracuse University for 40 days. Only? Wow, so many lifetimes. <laughs> Since I flew the coop from the USA. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, look, we're at the border. We have a curious look around. We have no money, no passports. We look around. What's the landscape here? What's the terrain? Oh, yeah, good. Lots of tall grass, agriculture area out in the country. There's the Indian check post close to us. No man's land, about a half a kilometer. Uh, and then, the, then the Nepalese check post. So what to do? What to do? And then we see those Himalayas. Uh, we're young and strong. We just agreed, like, let's just run like panthers through the wild grass and meet on the other side of the Nepali check post. Danks looks at me. Good luck, man. See you on the other side. All right, well, I run through the fields, and unfortunately, I trigger off dogs. You know, there's a few mud huts along the way, and they chase me and yipping and yapping just what I don't want. You know, create attention to myself. But finally, they backtrack once they leave their familiar range. You know, they're okay. And, uh, oops, what's next? Uh, this uh, short Nepali thin, look kind of weak. Uh, man pops out of the tall grass saying passport passport <laughs> obviously he's a checker he's a spot checker for the border you know for smugglers I'm so much bigger younger and stronger than him <laughs> I get a mango out of my Indian shoulder bag, and I have this rusty old kind of switchblade Pakistani knife. makes this horrible clicking sound, and then the blade locks into place. So I peel the mango. I slit the mango a few centimeters from his face, communicating to him, I obviously don't need a passport. Universal language, fear of getting your throat slit. And he drops down on his haunches into the tall grass and disappears as if he had never existed. He understands completely where I'm coming from. Though I wouldn't have heard him anyway. Oh, whew. um... Good gone, keep running, running, strong running. And uh, I am relieved. I break out again on the main road to Kathmandu on the other side of the Nepali check post. And who's there? Thanks. <laughs> he's beat me there. Not only that, he's traded two lapis lazuli gemstone rings to the Nepali truck driver, a Bedford driver who just cleared customs for a ride all the way to Kathmandu. Thanks. You're such a divine hustler. Oh, yeah. We whoop it up. 
we we shout happy shit we're like we've done it we've done it the indians cannot hassle us now oh no uh -uh. we've jumped the international border ah, <laughs> without passports ah. as we climb back into the back of the truck we're looking backwards you know out of the back of the truck and we like make ourselves comfortable in these 50 kilo sacks of bismati rice from Assam. Well, up front, the driver is marveling at his lapis rings. Wow, they fit his fingers perfectly. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fun watching India disappear in the rearview mirror as the truck driver goes off these endless switchbacks into the high Himalayan mountains, which neither dancer I've ever been to before. Denmark's pretty flat, and where I come from in Saginaw, Michigan, absolutely flat cornfields. That's it. You want a view? Go over a bridge. Uh, yeah. The powerful truth of what we just pulled off sinks in even deeper. It was like elbowing each other, you know, because we're going to play our chosen game for a change with the nations, huh? Tired of being pushed around by them. <laughs> well, here's our plan. He'll go to the Danish embassy. I'll go to the American embassy, and we'll claim that we lost our passports inside Nepal. Get new ones. And um, the fun will begin. <laughs> oh, these Nepalis, huh? They're also soft-spoken, mellow, especially after those throngs of socially aggressive and curious. You know, Indians, and I'll never call anybody a mosquito again. See the revenge of that? Now I'm living in the tropics in Hawaii with mosquitoes. I just let them bite me if I'm asleep. You know, they can have some fun too. Huh? As long as they don't wake me up, you know, drill, suck up some, some blood. <laughs> I guess they heard me. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, nobody's a mosquito, you're a mosquito, this is a mosquito, people aren't mosquitoes. Uh, well, the trip with the truck driver lasts some hours, it's a long way into the night, and a few hours still from Kathmandu, the truck driver stops at a rest area uh, for truckers, and uh there's no electricity anywhere around here, so the cafe has glass hooded lanterns with wicks, you know, hanging from trees and uh, log seats around a roaring campfire. Yeah. And uh, reminiscent of our Grand Trunk Road song and dance routine, uh, which you watched. Uh, Danks breaks out his hashish pipe and uh, makes pipe after pipe of strong Kashmiri hashish for the truck drivers and the cafe owner and us and <laughs> everybody gets like this divine buzz of pure hash. Well, um, the bizarre concept of uh, to these Nepalis, if anybody dumb enough to smuggle hashish into Nepal, which is like the Himalayas of hashish on planet Earth, Nepal hashish, uh, it cracks everybody up. <laughs> and the, the giddy laughter of mountain men resounds in the Himalayas. <laughs> Oh, to be free and laugh your head off. Does the soul good. Wow, Catman, do at last. Around midnight, the kindly Nepalese driver drops us off, and these massive, uh, you know, seven story Hindu wooden temples uh, just blows our minds. We're dazed, you know, as we gaze around ourselves. Unknown, medieval world, intact, centuries old. 
wooden Nepali temples looming overhead. I mean, Nepal just opened to tourism 18 years ago. They wouldn't let people in before 1951 at all. And at that time, the life expectancy of a Nepali was the same as Neathandral man. 29 years. Street lies. Forget about it. Liberated, footloose. Looking for fun. You know, when you're in your 20s, early 20s, you don't need sleep. Just like, who cares? You know, the night before. Mm. Uh, yeah, we saunter into the outskirts of town to watch the sunrise and have the sun rays freak out, freak over the Kathmandu Valley from the hill, a well-renowned Buddhist shrine crowning a thickly forest hill alive with chattering and aggressive monkeys. Sunrise in Kathmandu. What's that, Goddess Earth? I'm spacing out. This was supposed to be a story about the monastery where you first appeared in my life 50 years ago. Get back to the monastery story. Stop spacing out. Stop spacing out on the your India trip. Hmm. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Anyway, um, that's the story. You watch the film, and this is what's not in the film, but it gets uh, thanks to United Catman do. Because if you watch the film, you're like, what happened after that? You know, so this is what happened.